Good evening. The names David McDermott and Peter McGough probably mean nothing to you. If, however, you were a New York art lover, you would certainly know them, because in the past few years, McDermott and McGough have leapt spectacularly from cult to mainstream, witnessed their last month's New York exhibition, which was a total sellout. It is, in fact, rather ironic that Britain knows so little about them, because they know a great deal about Britain, or rather certain periods of British history. The lifestyle of McDermott and McGough, you see, is almost as intriguing as their paintings, and with full-page spreads in everything from house and garden to art forum, is becoming almost as well known. To begin with, they dress exclusively in Edwardian clothes, and they live entirely without the aid of any inconveniences. No phone, no dishwasher, no lights, and, of course, no television, either to watch or appear on. But where the late show's Matthew Collings goes, so does the camera. So tonight, we are proud to present, for the first time ever on television, something of the work, if not the actual persons, of McDermott and McGough. Pretty boys, witty boys, too, 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 lazy to fight stagnation. Haughty boys, naughty boys, all we do is to pursue sensation. The portals of society are always open wide. Our eccentricity is condoned. A point of quaint variety we're certain to provide. We dress in very decorative tones. A faded boys, a jaded boys, womankind. Gift to a bulldog nation. This is in the voice of David McDermott. From less enlightened minds. We all wear a green carnation. This is the work of David McDermott and Peter McGough, artists who live in the past. They believe in Christianity and brotherly love, and that all time periods exist simultaneously. Through their work and their way of life, they hope to convince others of their beliefs and thereby change society. Their home in New York, built in 1835 and restored to its original period by McDermott and McGough. Ding, dong, ding. At the sound of the dong, it will be 11.15. Dong. This is the British Broadcasting Company, bringing you the Cottage Hour. Brought to you by the Cottage Magazine, the protector of hearth and home. That's the cottage. We're on the air. We've a little time to spare. So with you most everywhere, we'll be on the air. These artists do not work merely in a studio, paint radical pictures and go home at night. They carry their art into the holistic world and construct while deconstructing. The message is to transform the world conserve time, much as the environmentalists are conserving the planet. Oh, with you most everywhere, we'll be on the air. The purity of their environment in self-transformation might be if they were to appear on television to spread the message of their art, so experts to speak for them. Thank you, Carl. Now, here we are in the house of McDermott and McGough, set in the Lower East Side. That part of the Lower East Side known as Alphabet City, the center of drugs, heroin, crack, and of course, countless abandoned buildings filled with squatters. Carl? This house represents a radical deconstruction of time. The McDermott's have systematically eliminated all present modern structures in order to get to the bottom line of meeting in time. If you opened one of the cabinets, you would find a collection of opera hats and other hats of the period. Uh, Adrian? And uh, thank you, Carl. And of course, uh, many New Yorkers here in uh, Lower East Side have uh, seen McDermott make their daily stroll between Alphabet City and Stuyvesant Hill, uh, wearing this apparel of the 1850s. This way, the neighborhood gets to participate in this work of art. Everything they do is accurate. There's no television in this house. There's no radio. There's no electricity, no central heating. Uh, there's certainly no double standard in their art of their art.
In our modern age of built-in obsolescence, McDermott and McGough believe the past is in danger of becoming extinct. This civilization has been battered by aimless vandalism, anti-culture, and by godless modernism. Britain, we call on you to support your monarchy for the sake of the whole world. Ladies, we will tell you of an objection to television. Television is the ultimate form of voyeurism and is destroying our communities. It discourages real experience. Instead of making Christmas, people watch Christmas. Instead of making a Yorkshire vegetable pudding, they watch a gourmet narrator display a Yorkshire vegetable pudding. These puddings no longer have smell or taste. They are reduced to a two-dimensional image in full synthetic color. We want the people of the world to go back to the front, be at home once a week to neighbor, and to go out calling. <laughs> This magnificent building houses no ordinary painter's studio. Uh, famous parties of the 30s, for instance, will be reproduced here with 150 real people. It is a veritable time laboratory. Thank you, Carl. This historic Second Empire five-story building houses all of their production efforts. Or the cottage is published. On the second floor, the paintings are made. On the third floor, the photographs are taken. On the fourth floor, there's a private dining room. And on the fifth floor, forward. Carl? Thank you, Eden. The college, real articles about up-to-date subjects, real authors, but translated into the style and language of 1913. I Already disconnected from conventional society, they turned the nation upside down into exaggerated reverence for normal, civilized values. Take up the hackneyed stereotype of the artist Dandy, a product of and an outcast from the industrial age, and give it a new twist, naive and menacing at the same time. And now, a bird call. If you know this bird, please write to us, and if you are correct, we will send you a surprise. This particular painting crystallizes the McDermott McGough vision of the time shift. Here we see prehistoric dinosaurs and plant life in an 1850 scene of the Hudson Valley with the Catskill Mountain House, uh, typical of the Hudson River School. Adrian? Thank you, Carl. And there's also something ominous about this painting. I guess we might all be chewed up just as the Victorians were by the ugliness of modernism, or the dinosaurs were by time. Another free construction uh, element in the McDermott McGough paintings is the psychosocial shock signal. And in this case, the juxtaposition and shock comes from the Sunday school saying, Jesus is watching next to uh, the all-seeing eye of God, uh, voyeuristically looking through a keyhole at a Victorian pornographic scene. Adrian? Thank you, Carl. And I would just like to let you know that McDermott and McGaugh to remind the English viewing audience, don't do anything you would not do if Jesus were watching. Thank you, Carl. These explanations of McDermott and McGough's work have been passed on directly from the artists themselves. But even the uninitiated can see that in their paintings they manipulate conventions of style and scale. Old-fashioned illustrations are cross-cut with a full-blown modern art handling. Highbrow museum art is mixed with the pop graphic and tiny figures in magazines are given a new monumental size. 
Another genre that McDermott and McGough excel in is history painting. However, this is homoerotic history. Most homoerotic history has been hidden for many years, and McDermott and McGough reveal it. This scene from about 1910 has been overlooked by most historians. This is a scene from maybe only 15 years ago, recent history, but that's another history that's been overlooked. Uh, McDermott and McGough are revealing these things to us. This is the daisy chain, all the boys that have, they've had the pleasure of knowing in their career, and um, we see that throughout most of their work, uh, the uh, homoerotic history, which uh, has been kept invisible so long by mainstream historians. This painting uh, comes from an unfinished sketch by Simeon Solomon, a pre-Raphaelite painter, contemporary of Swinburne, who was uh, imprisoned for homoerotic behavior. Uh, Messrs. McDermott and McGough took that unfinished sketch and brought it to fruition in this painting, so therefore completing history. Carl? Thank you, Adrian. I think that was an excellent explanation. Dearest listeners, we do entreat you to continue the practice of brotherly love, a tradition grounded in the precepts of Jesus and upheld so staunchly by the English public schools. Everyone knows the world is overpopulated. Those who refrain from reproducing are doing a public service. As a result of their affections, there is more space for all. Ultimately, the Uranians have perfected the highest form of faith, an assurance of a survival that transcends biology. No longer hidden from history, these lovers can bloom in the sunlight of the noon day. Everything in this exhibition is signed with McDermott and McGough's real names, but given a date from the past, anything from 1838 to 1943. The cases of old vases and broken crockery all have the same label from the San Francisco earthquake, 1906, but no further explanation is given. Everything has a story attached, and the experts could come back on and tell us about this one, but maybe now we've got the message. Whichever way you enter or leave McDermott and McGough's world, its final irony is that it is not the past, but the present, which is its subject. Their total artwork is not about a sentimental yearning for a lost golden age, but about the splits and uncertainties of our own time, the cracks in our own sense of reality. That is, of course, if McDermott and McGough exist at all. would like to meet McDermott and McGough in person and hear more of their views about civilization, Christianity, and eroticism, please write to the British Broadcasting Company to arrange a lecture tour. Good night, and when you go out on your bike at night, be sure to wear white. Good night, sweetheart. Good night. Signing off from New York. God bless you and good night. Signing off. Matthew Collings reporting and you might like to know that McDermott and McGough are now planning the first European tour. They will be traveling by boat rather than plane. <laughs>